Hey Brain Stuff, it's me, Ben. I had a pretty funny intro about typos, but our producer made me cut it. Let's cut to today's question. Does letter order matter? You have probably seen the meme going around about this. You might have read about this online and seen it cited as a study from Cambridge University. However, or should I say, Quo vere, there is no such study. It does not exist, full stop. This meme is one of those innumerable things masquerading as a fact on the internet. But unlike, say, the idea that Nazis escaped into some underground kingdom and built UFOs, the concept of letter order does have some truth to it. Dennis Norris, a researcher at Cambridge's Cognition and Brain Sciences Unit, did manage to track down some earlier research on word order from Nottingham University. A fellow named Graham Rawlinson showed that randomizing letters in the middle of words had little to no effect on the ability of readers to understand the text, so long as the first and the final two letters of the word are in the same place. This was never actually published in a scientific journal just sent as a letter to a magazine called New Scientist in 1999, but that's probably the grain of truth that led to the meme. And the meme itself has a few wild inaccuracies. First, letter order does matter in that it affects the readability of a phrase or passage. One study measured the eye movements of readers as they peruse sentences with transposed letters. You know, like switching the E and the A in sweat. They found the reading rate decreased by 11% for words with internally switched letters, by 36% if the switch was at the beginning of the word, and by 26% if it was at the end of a term. Second, the legibility of a jumbled word or phrase heavily depends on whether two, three, or four letter words are also jumbled. You know, stuff like at, you, soul, go, hold etc. So if we hold to Rawlinson's first proposed rule that the first and last two letters must stay the same, then we see that some words simply cannot be jumbled. They are unjumblable. A word I just made up. Side note, while we're talking about new or made up terms, you might hear this ability to read jumbled phrases called typoglycemia. That is a buzzword, not a legit scientific term, and as of this recording, you are not going to read it in any medical journals. Inside note, back to main note, your brain takes in information continually and the emphasis is always on speed like Sandra Bullock in that bus. So when you're reading, your brain gathers just enough information to know what word you're looking at. In Dennis Norris's example, you might be reading the letters R, E, A, D and not be sure whether they go in the order read or read. But now there's no point. Eureka screams that creepy genius in your head. If it's a word, it must be read. All the pieces are there. Marta Curtis, over at the Center for Research and Language at the University of California, San Diego, believes context is the primary factor here. When we have a context, we use it to pre-activate areas of our brain corresponding to what we expect to happen next. If we scan someone's brain while they hear a sound that leads them to expect another specific sound, we'll see that person's brain acting as if it's already hearing that next sound. This works with letters and words too, but it's not perfect. Your brain processes all of the letters of a word at once, using them as a context for each other. It's like it's looking at the forest instead of individual trees. But that's also why you can read words with numbers in place of letters. The letter-like appearance, in context, overrides their actual status as numbers. So boom, there you have it. The ability to read jumbled words is not rare, and your brain is more than up to the task. However, it takes a little bit longer to suss things out. Research on cognition and reading continues today, and who knows what we'll find. I mean, honestly, folks, we could all soon be communicating entirely in emoji. It's a brave new world.